This is an anechoic chamber. This is the Neumann KU-100. You're hearing microphones that are inside the right and left ear of this dummy head. So I'm here right behind you and we'll walk into the room and we see a beautiful Berlin out the window. And there's that environmental noise. It's just as startling when you walk into the room. Complete silence. I'm here at the Neumann headquarters in Berlin, Germany with Martin Schneider. Thank you so much for welcoming me inside this room. Pleasure. As you can probably hear, it's crazy quiet in here. Tell us a little bit about what this room is and, and how it sounds so quiet. Well, it's most often referred to as anechoic chamber because we have no echoes, no reverberation. That's why it sounds dead. Some people also call it the dead room. But a room like this is never absolutely dead. There's also some tiny reflections, but it's so attenuated above a certain frequency. Depending on the wavelength and on the wedges, we have some absorptive material wedges here. It's technically speaking porous absorbers, mineral wool, protectively coated with this textile stuff so we don't inhale these fibers. We've got 80 centimeters here, and the longer they are, the deeper the frequency goes down. By the way, if you're wondering why the camera shakes a little bit when we move around, it's because in addition to having absorption on the side walls and the ceiling, there's absorption on the floor. So we're standing on this wire mesh, which I would assume allows sound to get down, be absorbed, and hopefully Correct. return yeah. as little as possible. We do hope you don't get seasick. I mean, we're standing on a net and it's impossible not to move when you're talking, but we'll try to stand as still as possible. I've always wanted to go inside one of these rooms. I've heard that the new guy always, they shut the door behind mm -hmm. him and turn the lights off. <laughs> and it gives you this experience where you can hear the blood pump mm -hmm. through your heart. Uh, it's so quiet. Yes, and other people say, yeah, that's the first time they really can listen to their tinnitus. Most everybody says um, they feel a pressure on their is. Mm. The fun th funny thing is there it's the missing noise sound pressure mm. that we're used to that you're actually experiencing. So yeah. there's no additional pressure in here. It's the missing sound pressure. And I think which, that makes me mm. want to talk louder. Do you feel that as well sometimes? Um, absolutely as, as well because okay ev everything is dampened. All we get in here is just direct sound. The direct sound coming from my mouth hitting your ears. And if I turn around and I speak into the wall, into the other direction, um, there are no reflections coming back. So it should be quite lower in level right now. So it's better to speak absolutely into the microphone yeah, so true. the left ear gets the direct sound. It's not something you notice when you go into a room. Your brain doesn't say necessarily, this is the direct sound, this is the reverberant sound, particularly those first reflections that give you the awareness of the space. The long reverb tail, mm. your brain may be mm. able to say, yeah, that's reverb. Mm. But when you come in here, what you notice is, wow, there is only the direct sound mm. and nothing else. Mm. So it almost made me realize direct sound sounds a lot different than I thought. Yeah, and it's just a tiny piece of um, of the sound we actually record when we do a recording. Because as you mentioned, there's the early reflections which do psychoacoustically give us the impression on room size, which we can't really differentiate from the direct sound because they're so directly after the direct sound, but our brain is, is able to differentiate that and sell, tell us, all right, we're in a small bathroom now, we're in a big corridor, we're in a concert hall. And then what everybody or most everybody hears is, all right, the long reverberant tail that you're all aware of. But here we just, we just have the direct sound and um, for vocalists or all sort of instrumentalists, it is a very enervating experience to record in here because your nice trumpet now sounds like a thin bit of brass because you just get the direct sound which goes straight out of the trumpet into some corner and never comes back. Yeah. You miss all the envelopment. That's one of the big mistakes I think modern recording engineers, especially mm. at home studios, are making. Mm is they say, my room sounds terrible, it's not, a, it's not a professional studio, so let's go into a closet and put a bunch of blankets all around and put a blanket over mm. my head and make it as dead as possible. In this room, mm. it's sort of okay because such low frequencies are being attenuated mm. and it's, mm. it, you still get a nice uh, balanced frequency response when I'm speaking right at you. But in your own closet, 
with very thin acoustic treatment, that's only really attenuating the high mids and high frequencies, right. which can mm-hmm. lead to a very dull sound. So I urge you, instead of trying to make your recording as dead as possible, just try to find a place in your room that sounds okay. Because even a not ideal acoustical room is still a space, and we're used to hearing sound in spaces, not in completely dead environments. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> it's a free field room. It's, it's like if you're standing out on an open field, and there's no trees, no walls, no reflection from nowhere, and you shout, and it sounds very thin. Yeah. Because the sound goes anywhere, but doesn't come back because there's no echoes. Yeah, you may recognize that from my video on the inverse square law or the inverse distance law, where, yeah, sound attenuates at a very predictable rate in a free field, right? Absolutely. But when you put, for example, a barrier to one side or behind a sound source, it gets a little bit louder. If you put a sound source in a corner, it gets a little bit louder. And each time you add a surface... Um, you can expect less attenuation over distance. Right. So much can be taught inside this room. Something else that comes to mind is if you're recording, maybe the best thing to do isn't to put a blanket over your head and go inside Mm -hmm. a padded room. But what can we learn about this? Well, reflections are our main concern. So would it be safe to say that if you're experiencing some sort of phasiness Mm -hmm. from a reflection from the wall, it may make sense to distance yourself from the wall a bit so that the sound has to travel more before it reflects back to the microphone. Understanding how reflections work. Understanding that I think is the most important thing because the next time you encounter a situation, you'll have that knowledge and you can improvise and use that knowledge rather than just like learning all the tips. You'll be equipped with the underlying concept. And I think that's what's really powerful. I want to thank you again, you and your whole team. Uh, it's really cool that I've come here and you guys have welcomed me in, shown me this. It's been such an awesome opportunity to finally step foot in one of these rooms. If you're interested in learning more about the KU100, I'm going to be having a conversation with one of the main actors in the development of the KU100. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. And make sure to watch my discussion with Martin. I'll leave a link to that video as well. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Pleasure.